This is the Four Man Rush. Hello, Panther fans, and welcome to another podcast of the Four Man Rush. I'm your host, Timmy VO, here with Kev and Will, and we're going to talk about some more of them camp highlights, hard hitting, and fast running sons of guns down in Charlotte, North Carolina, in the El Pato. They're getting it done, man. They're down there, they're down there cranking it out, man. I don't know if you guys have been checking out the vids on the old Panther website, but buddy, this Coach Rule got them sons of guns competing, and it's 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 going to be it's going to be hell for whoever we we see on this field when they click together, guys and gals. This 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 is special. I like it. I like what I'm seeing, man. I, I'm like what I'm hearing, and uh, the four man rush is here to tell you all about it in detail. Um, tonight we're going to break down the offensive side of the football, uh, what, what we've seen so far, and um, giving you guys a detailed analysis of uh, what you can expect. Um, for the offensive offensive side of the ball, of course, um, and of course we know we'll throw in some more um, um, you know uh, facts and details and truths about what's going on down in Charlotte and uh, the NFL season as a whole as we lead up to the old uh, Oakland Raiders, man. Well, excuse me, the Las Vegas Raiders, Vegas, the Vegas, Vegas Raiders, yeah, them Raiders, Raiders. <laughs> Shout out to the Berm. All right, so. Uh, we'll start with you, Kev, and uh, we'll ho- hop on over to Will, and uh, I guess you guys can uh, bounce bounce uh, back back and forth between uh, 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 positions. Um, of course, Kev, we'll start out, start out with the O line with you, and um, and uh, we'll, we'll hop over to uh, oh, uh, Will for Bridgewater and the QBs, and then we'll come back to you for you know either running back or wide receiver, however you want to do it, and uh, we'll go from there. Cool, cool. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for dropping in and listening to the uh, podcast of the four-man rush. Hold on to your hats. Kevin Avery, break down this old line for us, brother. You seem to be uh, talking good things about him earlier. Yeah, definitely, Tim. This offensive line coming into, you know, this training camp, even before, you know, COVID took over, was considered by far the hugest question mark on this team. I think that the moves that were made to acquire the talent that we have on the offensive line is, is starting to show some of the the reason behind why these players were signed. You know, fans love big names and, you know, listen to PFF and these ratings and well, why we can't sign this $15 million left guard, you know, and, you know, all this other hogwash. I mean, you know, basically – you know, we got to get we're getting players that fit us that fit our scheme and how we're going to do things. Uh, start off with you know at center, the much maligned you know Paradis. He's he's come back now. I know that there was a picture making him not looking at his best when facing Dare Brown and Dare Brown had him in one hand and Christian McCaffrey in the other. <laughs> you know, hey, it happens. Give me. One thing I've learned about the social media. Uh, especially with the Panthers, is that, hey, they're just going to show highlights. They're not going to show the whole story. You know, outside of that, you haven't I haven't read on anything stating that, you know, Paris is not looking good or he's not holding his own. Again, it's only just been a week and some days. But, you know, overall, one thing, I'm just glad that he's healthy. Because this time last year, you know, he was riding a bike, you know, still in the table waiting to get um, – waiting to get really clear before he can actually play. Yep. It was on a very limited snap count. I remember going to training camp and saw just about as much as him on the sideline next to me as I did on the field. <laughs> so, you know, take it from that note. Right, uh, right. Um, he's going to be the key to how well the offensive line is going to do. It starts up front with the center. Yep. You know, you get good center play, it's a trickle-down effect to the rest of the offensive line on both sides. So, mm. as someone that's – a fan of Paradis and was excited that we signed him. I'm looking at this as his redemption tour. I'm looking at it as, you know, yeah, y'all talked all that shit about me. I'm finna whoop every ass in front of me. And I think facing a Derrick Brown every day in practice will have him more NFL ready versus last year than, say, a Don Terry Poe or Vernon Butler. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm. the, that's just how I feel about that. Move on to the guard spot. I think that's where you're going to find the deepest, hardest competition in training camp at both guard spots. Uh, 
let's start with, you know, guard um, John Miller, who Coach Matt Rule has had extremely high praise on. He's even went as far as saying this is exactly the type of player that we want here in Carolina, his demeanor, his work ethic, um, you know, his aggressiveness, everything that he does is the ideal of what we want this offensive line to be. So that speaks volumes a lot for a guy that a lot of fans just kind of didn't think nothing much of because he would play where last year, the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, the Bengals only won two games, so he must be trash. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work like that. No. You know, so it's good to it's good to see that he, as of right now, seems to be the leading candidate to man the right guard position. Flip on the other side, you know, last year's six round pick, Dennis Daly. Mm-hmm. He seems to be someone that's making headway to be in position to have that uh, have that spot. Uh, of course, you know he played a lot of his uh, rookie year last year at left tackle. You know, filling in for injured Greg Little, mm-hmm. and you know he had mixed results. He had some success. He had some failures. That's what you expect in a not only in a rookie year, but you know a five and eleven team. You know, so that's, you know, you take the good with the bad, you know, when it comes to that. Uh, but overall, you know, I think Dennis Dale has put himself in a position where that's the spot that he possibly could earn. But the competition is deep and steep. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have other players such as Chris Reed, someone that we signed off the Miami practice squad last year, late last year. And um, coming on strong, I heard Coach Rue mention some things about him. Also, Michael Schofield, who came in from the Rams. No, uh, that's another guy that has experience playing both guard and tackle. Mm-hmm. You know, he's in the mix at the guard uh, guard spot as well. Uh, you know, so I just think that overall, you know, we just got nice. There's a nice rotation. One thing that I like about that I'm seeing from Coach Rule and his assistants is that they, they don't mind rotating the players. You know, guys that are normally third and fourth string, they're getting reps with the first string. You know, they want to see what you can do with of the town Ryan. That's something that I personally been screaming for for years. You know, you know, third string offense playing third string defense is really not going to tell me a whole lot. Right, man. You know, let me see this play around other talent around him to see if he can step his game up to the talent that that he's playing with. Yep. So, you know, that's that's the nature of it with the uh, guard spots. And as far as the tackle position, uh, it's pretty much what we knew it was going to be. Taylor Moten having a, a strong camp so far. Uh, doing well in practice. You know, we noticed his fourth year, the, the big contract year. We know the year that, you know, they're they're playing f- they're playing for their money. And so far, he's more than the more than held his own. Lost a few battles as expected, but overall, he's he's put in a solid camp so far. Uh, nice. He's someone that's been cited multiple times by uh, not only Coach Rule but uh, Joe Brady as uh, offense coordinator uh, Brady as well about you know how he how his blocking is is, you know, leading by example what he wants to see mm. and how the sky's the limit for him. Now, on the, on the left side, he had uh, Russell O'Cone. He had some tightness in his lower back uh, that allowed other players to get reps in as well. Uh, but he's been eased his way back in. And once he's been back in, he's someone that's been uh, pretty solid, pretty steady so far. Again, win some, lose some, as you expect. You know, you, you, you want to expect it to go back and forth between your offense and defense. If one side is continually dominating the other, that could be a telltale sign that's that may not be good leading up into the regular season without any preseason games. Right. Uh, it's definitely something um, worth noticing. But you know, overall, I like the fact that Coach Rule is doing a lot of eleven on eleven drills mm. uh, with this period. That's really allowing iron to shop and iron in the trenches. You know, battling the talent that's on the opposite side of the ball. Um, overall, I, I, I like what I like what I'm seeing thus far from the offense line. Definitely, it's room for improvement, room for growth. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, seeing these uh, players continue to grow up under these uh, new drills that uh, Coach Rule is is doing. Right on, man. Sweet, great, great breakdown, man. Great breakdown. Um, <laughs> I would love to see this offensive line come together much better than they did last year. Dear God. <laughs> right? <laughs> you tell him, Kim. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so, Will, um, the quarterback situation. Of course, we got Mr. Uh, 
Um, Mr. Bridgewater uh, up in there at the old starting QB spot. I and mean, we got some other people in there too, man. Uh, give give us uh, somewhat of an update and a breakdown of the QB room. Yeah, I've been reading a lot of good things about how the I've been reading a lot of good things about how the quarterbacks are playing. Um, with Teddy, he's just accurate, throwing with timing, anticipation. He's got good chemistry going with DJ Moore. He's found a nice little weapon with Ian Thomas, who's starting to emerge as a key piece of that offense. So look out for him with uh, Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel as well. Uh, today, he had a nice little route to Christian McCaffrey where he just locked the ball over mm. Shaq Thompson's outstretched arms to McCaffrey in the back of the end zone. Mm. So I think a lot of people are just impressed with just how accurate he is, you know, how he throws with touch, with timing, with anticipation, and just the general command he has with this offense. So, I mean, I think there's no doubt about who whose team this is coming into this year. He's going to be the guy, and he's going to have his three-year contract to prove himself and show that whether or not he's a franchise quarterback in this league. So I think the more interesting story in the quarterback room is what's going on with the backup positions. You got uh, Will Greer and P.J. Walker. Uh, Will Greer just looks like a more composed, confident quarterback in his second year. Mm. I think last year he was a little bit jittery, unsure mm. of himself, mm. let, lacked confidence. The game was just moving a little bit too fast for him. Now, I'm not only saying that because of how he performed in the regular season. I think by the time he got shoved into the mix, the team had already quit. We had an interim coach, new offensive coordinator. A lot of the guys were on IR at that point. So it's not really fair to judge him off the limited action he got during the regular season. But even during the preseason, he was just uncomfortable back there, jittery, unable to read what was going on. The game was just overall moving too fast for him. But now it just appears he's calmed down, he's settled in. The game's moving much slower. He's got a system he's more comfortable in. And he's having a good camp so far from what I could tell. I mean, he was 7-for-7 seven seven today. Mm. And he had a nice uh, pass to, to Merrick Hemingway the other day who was able to go up and make a one-handed catch. And he performed very well in the live scrimmage on Saturday. He threw a nice little fade route to Brandon Zilstra, you know, who caught it over Dante Jackson, our starting corner. So, you know, Will Greer's not going to go down without a fight. He's having a great camp so far and looks to be much improved over the, his rookie season. So hopefully we can get something out of Greer and make something of that draft pick, that top 100 draft pick we spent on him. P.J. Walker, he's been a little erratic. Rule mentioned that he's an explosive playmaker. You know, he's able to make plays and improvise when the protection breaks down. He's able to scramble get those kind of yards or allow receivers time to get open and make those kind of plays. Mm. He just has to be more smart with the football because turnovers are one of Matt Rule's biggest pet peeves. So that's just something P.J. has got to be able to do. I think when camp started, P.J. had the edge over Will, but just with the way Greer has been playing over the last few weeks, he's closed that gap. So now he's got a tight head-to-head -head battle going on for that QB2 spot. And unfortunately, we're not able to watch – preseason games to kind of get a gauge on where each guy is right now. Yeah. I mean, based off what I'm reading and what I'm seeing, it seems like it's Will Greer's job to lose at this point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we still got more weeks to go. Who knows what's going to happen in these scrimmages and practices over the next several weeks. You know, I can see P.J. finally settling in, taking care of the football and showing that explosive playmaking ability that he showed in the XFL. So mm -hmm. as far as the quarterback room, definitely I'm – Keeping my eye on that QB2 battle to see who's going to be backing up Teddy Bridgewater this year. I know, man. It looks promising. It looks promising. And, uh, folks, I'm not trying to you know throw any zingers here or nothing, but uh, it's going to be nice to see a, an accurate quarterback on the football field. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, Kev, uh, you want to touch on the fullback tight end crowd? Oh yeah, definitely. You know that's 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 my pleasure. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You know, you know, I, you know, I like you know, I love my grunts. Yes, sir. Um, hey, let's start off with who's who's solidly been pretty much steady and spectacular from the beginning. Um, third year tie in Ian Thomas. Oh. You know, he's 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 snatching balls out the air. He's running smooth routes. He looks 
faster. He's, you know, his routes look crisper. I mean, you know, you're talking about someone that's, that is really taking advantage of this opportunity to become, you know, not just an NFL starter, but to command a lot of the reps um, whenever tight ends are going to be in the formation, which is going to be a large majority of the time. He's definitely stepped up to the plate. Uh, he even went on in an interview to credit a lot of his uh, improvement on the offseason to, you know, learning behind Greg Olson the first two years. He said the main thing that he learned from Greg Olson was how to be a professional, how to take care of your body, how to, you know, eat properly. And he said he took all those things into um, his offseason and obviously it's, it's paying off. Um, he's someone that's, you know, just I haven't read any one bad thing about Ian Thomas uh, every time they're doing updates here. Again, it sucks that we're not there on the scene doing our usual, you know, four man rush observations. So, yeah. you know, we got to take it for what it's worth. But it's but it's good that that what's been said about um, Ian Thomas so far. Uh, Chris Manns hurts earlier. Matt Rule said at the beginning of the camp that he when he watches him on film, he sees man hurts is someone that could be possibly the best blocking tight end in the NFL. Wow. Uh, you know, that's something that may not get a lot of fans excited and crazy, but she you know, should. when, when Christian McCaffrey breaks off one of them 25, 30 yard runs, you know, probably gonna see man hurts, you know, standing over somebody, you know what I'm saying? With that big swole 3% body frame of his, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause he done pancake that ass, you know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, that's what, that's what having a good blocking tight ain't going to do. I know everybody, you know, love the, you know, the receiving tight ends with all the pretty stats. And I get it. I get it. You know, numbers, you know, in fantasy football, I get all that. But, you know, us old heads, you know, ain't nothing like, you know, I can't say the word, but put his, you know what, in the dirt. You know, you know what I'm saying, Tim? <laughs> yes, sir. You know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> yeah, yeah. But that, I, I just like I just like that. Um about about Manhurst is his block nine. and I think that if he give him a chance, I mean, hey, he showed the Monday night game. He throw me the ball, I run that bitch in the end zone. <laughs> sure, yeah. Excuse me, Martinez. That's yeah. what he's <laughs> <laughs> But uh yeah. but yeah, I definitely hope he gets gets some targets as well. Cause he definitely has worked worked himself into a position to be, you know, where he can complement as the number two tight end. Mm. Uh the number three position, I mean you know, it's, it's wide open, but I, I was thoroughly impressed with what I saw from uh, Hemingway. I mean, I know Will just touched up on it earlier. Uh, he caught a pass from a one-handed pass from Teddy Bridgewater with, uh, I believe it was Landon and coverage, if I'm not mistaken, number 37. Um, Will, you can correct me on that later on. But, yeah, I, I just like the fact that it just seems like there's an abundance of, at this point, you know, guys that's capable of making plays and doing so consistently. You know, you don't hear anything from the media about uh, they, they need to look into bringing in some more tight end help or or anything of that nature. So that's that's always a plus. Mm -hmm. um, let me slide over to that backfield. I mean, hey, you know, y'all y'all know me. You know, Armour, that's that's my boy. You know, if it's, if it's okay to say I got a man crush on the team, that's him. That's you know, you know, that's my boy. Six two two fifty five. You know, chisel like an Adonis. I mean, the dude is just, he's got that old school body, but he's got that new school, you know, ability. You know, he can, you know, he can block. Well, we know he can block because mm. I think last week, like the third day of practice, they said he laid a block so hard that it was heard around the whole field. So, Ooh. you know, that's, that's bringing Ooh. the wood right there. You Ooh. know, when you got, you know, you got a fullback that's, that's making hits like that, that that can only just mean good things for McCaffrey and whatever running back is falling behind him. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely think that in his fourth year, he, he's got to get a chance to show what he's got he can do. I know that with the days in NFL, there's so many three, four, five wide receiver sets. I get all of that. But, you know, it's just something about the ability to just punish someone. That 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 mentally demoralizes a team. The fact yes. that I'm just going to be physical with you and ain't a damn thing you can do about it. Not a it. damn thing. You know, we're gonna run the ball right here, and you can't stop me. That's that's why I like. So I hope that the you know from what we've heard about Joe Brady and offense, that based on you know the Saints' usage of it, they I think it's about twenty percent of the snaps or something like that, which I can deal with because that's a lot more than what he's been getting. But I, I think that he's someone that can give an opportunity. I, I saw a highlight today where 
he caught a couple of passes as well. So that's good to see. As you know, he can also play some tight end as well. So he could possibly be in the mix to be used um, in that position. I've always said that I think that he can also be a be that guy we need at the short yardage back. Mm. You know, we, you know, Will was talking earlier about, you know, tired of getting stuff when we get down to the five yard line. You know, hey, let's let's line up. Let's let's I'm get some meat. Put big man hurts in front of him. Yeah. Oh man. You know, let's go old school power eye and let's just let's just move them off the ball. Meet you in the game. You know, let's we ain't gotta make this complicated. You know, that's 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 the type of thing that established attitude and this yeah. and established dominance, especially in the trenches. Mm. You know, the offensive line, we get juiced up when we bring the big boys in the backfields, like, you know, we, we ain't we ain't finna complicate this. We we just finna punch you in the mouth and that's it. <laughs> Uh, so overall, I think that, you know, we're getting good play so far out of the tight end and full back position. And I hopefully I hope that leads to, you know, to some reps and some ability to make plays this upcoming season. So we'll see. I know, man. Love it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Oh, man. So, Will, you want to touch on the, the uh, running backs? I mean, you can talk about McCaffrey all damn night. I mean, hell, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's say the quarterbacks. We know who the man in the RB room is. I mean, McCaffrey's out there doing McCaffrey things. But what I noticed this camp is Joe Brady has him actually doing drills with the wide receivers. Uh-oh. So he won't. So maybe some days he'll work out with the wide receivers, run routes. He's running routes against cornerbacks, They're splitting them out wide, putting them in the slot a lot more. Mm. Today, in goal line drills, like I mentioned earlier, he had a route. And from the slot against Shaq Thompson, where he caught a touchdown pass from Teddy Bridgewater in the back of the end zone. Mm. So you're probably going to see a lot more creativity in the ways the Panthers use McCaffrey this year, as opposed to what North Turner had been doing in the past with more of the just the power run game and the not a advanced route tree. It was more of swing passes, screen passes, check downs, um, Texas routes, things like that. Just mm. easy passes to get them out of space. I think you're actually going to see more of a receiver skill set and a route tree in this offense this year. So that's something to be excited about. So, I mean, other than that, you know, he's explosive. He broke off a long run earlier yesterday, I think, when it got everybody excited. He was catching the ball well. So just do out there doing CMC things. But with him possibly taking more reps as a wide receiver, that's going to allow for these guys behind him to get more reps. And I think Mike Davis has stepped up into that number two spot. Now, I know a lot of fans, you know, it's, it's all about numbers and stats. You know, just look at his cap hit and whine about it. But, I mean, we're in August now. The guys we got are the guys we got. So let's focus yeah. on what they can do, yeah. the skill set they bring, and how they can be used as opposed to things back in March. Because what you're going to use the cap space for in August anyway. Mm. But, <laughs> mm. but Mike Davis, he's having a very good camp. I mean, he's 5'9", 220, just a bowling ball back there. Hmm. So imagine hey, Kevin talking about um, Arma and Manhurts. Let's put Arma, Manhurts, and Mike Davis Ooh. in this power formation and let's run the ball down here and see what they can do. But he, um, I mean, he's breaking tackles, running physical. I mean, people forget he had over 700 yards from scrimmage with the Seahawks. I mean, he's no slouch. Hmm. I mean, he, he can run the ball, and for a guy his size, he has soft hands. He's also getting open and catching the ball out of the backfield and showing a receiver skill set. So this is a guy I think a lot of people slept on. I did a poll on Twitter on who should be, who do you want to see, the RB2. I mean, Bonifon won the poll, which I'll get to in a minute. Jordan Scarlett was second by a significant margin. He was just cut yesterday. Mm. This guy, Mike Davis, who was third in the poll with only 11% of the votes, he's emerging as the clear cut number two guy. And Matt Rule in his interview said today he wants to get him on the field and show what he can do. So Uh-oh. expect to see more usage from these backup running backs this year, especially if Mike Davis continues to have a good camp. I mean, he had a very good interview today on the team website where he just talked about the offense, his role and how it is preparing as a backup versus starter. So I suggest you watch that as well. But mm. he's definitely stood out so far as a guy that's going to lock up that RB2 spot behind McCaffrey. Uh, Bonifon's a guy who I think is always going to be in the mix because of the versatility he brings to the table mm. as a runner and a receiver. According to Joe Person, he's 
stock has kind of fallen off a bit. He had some drops the other day, if I recall. Mm. So hopefully he can get that ironed out. And, you know, he just hasn't been as – he hasn't stood out as much as Mike Davis has up to this point. But let's not um, – we got a lot of time to go. We know what Bonifant can do. I mean, yeah. he broke off a 50-yard run. <laughs> last, Jags, uh, yeah. When he made the most of his touches last year. So, yeah. let's you know, let's just keep an eye on it and see how this plays out over the next couple of weeks. Maybe he steps up at some point. But the surprise to me, and this might be a reason why we were able to cut – Jordan Scarlett has been the guy we just signed from the Jets, Trenton Cannon, Virginia State University. Got to give a shout out to my HBCUs as a Howard. Right, right. Not a graduate. I didn't graduate from Howard, but I was there for two years, so I still rep the Bison in my HBCUs. Good, good. So I'm going to rep my CIAA brother over here is doing very well. I'm mm. recording to Joe Person. He says he doesn't see envision a scenario where Trenton Cannon doesn't make the team. So he's considering him to be a guy that might crack this roster. Shit. What he brings to the table, he's fast. He runs a low 4 4 40. Mm. He's a sprinter speed. He's a kick, great kick returner for the Jets. He um, He's also a good on special teams, just running down and hitting somebody. Kickoff team, punt team, well, things like know. that. Yeah. So, so I'm loving seeing these underdog guys step up, get opportunities. Be able to come out here and make plays like on special teams. You know, Matt Rule made a great point. He said, We have plenty of superstar talent on this team. I want the gritty guys that can step up and allow us to be a tough team and, be, you know, and do the dirty work, the work that nobody else wants to do. Right. And that's the reputation he wants as a ball club. So when you have guys on who are willing to step in and just be great on special teams and run down and hit somebody, you know, that's what you need to have a complete football team. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man. Look like we're gonna have some depth at the running back spot we never had before. Now, I was I was surprised when I let Scarlett go because I didn't realize um, that gentleman we picked up that you just mentioned um, from the Jets was uh, was doing his thing like that. Man, that's 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 good. Bonifant better be on his p's and q's. Remember last was that the same? Was that the Jags game also where he had that pass and he dropped that bad boy? He could have took off to the house. Here we go with the drop season again. Come on, son. Come on now. Goodness gracious. Dropping the ball like drawers at a damn Jodeci concert. Wrong with you. Anyway. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Tim, another thing to keep in mind uh, is that this year, you know, we used to say in the 53-man roster, actually this year is going to be 55. Uh, oh, yeah. So it's going to be two more slots. So um, – it could be a chance we might keep four running backs, um, you know, on the roster as, uh, as well. I, you know, just determine, do you want to use that extra, um, you know, spot? I'm thinking probably extra spot for the offense and defense. Do you want to use it on a seventh wide receiver? Do you want to use it on a tenth offensive lineman? Do you want to use it on a, like a fourth running back? You know, like how, you know, it just depends. So it's uh, it's definitely, it's definitely going to allow some um, ability where, you know, you can, you know, show what you can do. The more you can do, the better. Right. Uh, like uh, Matt Rose uh, was also saying that, uh, hey, Will, I can't think of his name. You can help me out. He plays defensive back, but he also played running back. Um, I can't think of the guy's name. Yeah, Hartsfield, Miles Hartsfield. Yeah, with him, um, you know, he that he scored a touchdown. And got an interception in practice. So, Dang. I mean, hey, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, position flexibility seemed to be the key. I, I read where all the tight ends from Ian Thomas to uh, Manhurst and Armour were also taking, uh, was long snapping as well. You know, just, you know, Jeez. hey, you know, you never know. I you mean, that's, know. you know, I know J.J. Jansen been here, what now, like 11 years and yeah, only had one bad snap. But, I mean, you know, I like the fact that, you know, Matt Rule is, is is looking at that and and don't don't never want to lose a game because you didn't have a backup long snapper ready. You know, and I like the fact that guys that are likely going to be on the field. So if something does happen, you got two or three guys that you know if you need to plug in. If something does happen, you know it, it won't be you know anything out of the ordinary. So, but yeah, having um having fifty five players instead of fifty three, and I think forty eight can be active. Um, on game day, I think that's going to really uh, allow a player that may not normally get a uniform get one this year. It might be a breakthrough player too. 
We'll see. We'll see. Um, so the wide receiver room. Um, you guys want to split that up? I'll let, I'll, I'll defer to Will. <laughs> All righty. Will talk talk about the pretty boys, Will. <laughs> yeah, we um we get a little bit banged up in the wide receiver room. Ah hell. Um first we had some great news today. Um Omar Bayless had a successful knee scope and good. he'll be back in two weeks. So he's not gonna miss a lot of time. That's good. So that's good because Bayless was a guy who's really stood out early on in this process as a guy that can step up and take one of those last three wide receiver spots. So that's just something to keep an eye on there. Nice. <clears throat> uh, DJ Moore looks great. He's developing great chemistry with Teddy, which I expected. Their games complement each other very well with mm. Teddy's short to intermediate accuracy and mm. DJ's ability to create separation on those routes and get yards after the catch. Mm. <clears throat> I think that's a match made in heaven. Uh, Robbie Anderson's having a great camp, and he's not just a deep threat either. I mean, they're using him on these underneath routes, letting them use that speed on those deep and shallow crossers, let them run away from those DBs. You know, Teddy getting it to him, and he's able to get those extra yards there. Mm. Uh, Curtis Samuel, uh, he did make a great catch in the back of the end zone last week, Mm -hmm. if you look on the uh, Panthers' website. But he's had some hamstring tightness, so I haven't really heard much about him and how – He's progressing with that, how much reps he's getting there. I know they did mention they're going to use him more as both a running back and a wide receiver, the way he was used at Ohio State. That's something to look forward to there. But with the hamstring, something you don't want to play with. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're taking it light on him for now, which is why you're not hearing much about what he's able to do in camp. As far as the back of the depth chart, uh, Seth Roberts is in concussion protocol. So hopefully, you know, he'll get – cleared to play soon so he was supposed to be number four on the depth chart Mm -hmm. Uh, Kirkwood is having surgery for a broken clavicle we don't know when he's gonna be back so they picked up um, bought some new guys and they bought Tommy Lee Lewis in from New Orleans if you Mm -hmm. remember Mm -hmm. he's the guy in the playoff game against the Rams that Drew Brees found open and the Rams player just clocked him cleaned his clock before the ball got there and no pass interference was called (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> so, so he's going to have an opportunity yeah. to compete and try to earn a roster spot. Uh, Farrell Cooper is a guy to look out for. He straight up said it. I don't want to be known as a returner. I'm a wide receiver. Okay. So he was an all-pro, punt re- all-to return specialist, I should say, back in 2017 with the Rams. Yep. So I think he's got a good shot to make the roster with his return ability. And he's also showing ability as a receiver, getting separation. I know he beat Dante on a speed out. From what I saw, he's caught some deep balls, a nice deep ball from Will Greer the other day. Nice. So he's a guy that, you know, we'll look out for to make the roster as well. But the standout, surprisingly so far to me, has been uh, Brandon Zilstra. Hmm. We're talking about a guy that was a D3 product, and he went to the CFL for a year and played very well. He just was so persistent. He found he was from Minnesota. At a small school in Minnesota, he got a tryout for the Vikings, made the team, Mm. got cut, but the Panthers picked him up, and he's just having an excellent camp. I mean, he's making contested catches, getting open. Mm. He's been one of the more consistent performers so far through training camp, and Matt Rule and the staff have just been really impressed with what Zilstra's been able to do up to this point. Mm. So if we can get something out of him, that would be great as well. So Yeah, big bonus. We'll see how it go with all these injuries. Don't be surprised if you see some roster moves this week where they maybe add another receiver. I know they tried out four guys on Sunday, mm. including uh, Cam Phillips from the XFL, mm. who was teammates with P.J. Walker. So we'll see. I think we expect them to get a couple guys back tomorrow off of injury, which is a good thing. Mm. And luckily, Bayless is going to come back in a couple weeks. So we just got to get guys healthy. And I think the receiver room could be Pretty deep, aside from the top three with DJ Curtis and Robbie. Interesting, man. Uh, well, I hope everything. I hope everything pans out, man. And I, yeah, high hopes, man. I want to see that. I want to see that that offense on full tilt, man. Hopefully, we can have that happen. All right, so um, we have broken down the offensive side of the football. 
Um, so far, so good. Um, great breakdown, fellas. And um, episode on episode sixty four, we're gonna break down the defensive side of the ball. And boy, that's gonna be exciting. <laughs> that's gonna be exciting, boy. Oh my God, Big Bad Brown is gonna be a problem, folks. That that. We'll call him the Great Wall of Auburn. He's going to come up in this bad boy, man. That dude is just a god. He's just a gorilla. <laughs> it's like a silverback eating a bag of habaneros, boy. He's about to just punch you in the face. <laughs> Woo! Boy, I can't wait to talk about that cat, man. It's going to be all right. Oh, man. Man. If y'all, hey, if y'all haven't checked out that video with, with him going through Paradise to get uh, CMC, bro. That, that's a sight to see, man. First of all, first and foremost, what you notice, well, what I noticed first of all was just the size of that man. Paradis is trying to hold him back, man. He was just—he's basically towering over him. He just reaches around like, "Hey, twenty-two, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here little guy, come here, <laughs> yeah, come here, little boy, come here." Oh man. So, um, any parting shots, gentlemen? Yeah, I'd like to give one real quick. Uh, to any of our fans that are out in the Gulf Coast that's getting ready to deal with, uh, I believe it's Hurricane Laura, we want to let you know you and our thoughts and our prayers. Yeah. Be smart. Stay safe. Yeah. If they're telling you evacuate and get the hell out, you by God. Like, like don't, don't, don't wait to get told a second time. Uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, everything can be replaced up your life. Amen. You know, uh, Mm. And, and 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 the water is way more damaging than than anything so yeah. you know so if you're you know out that way or know someone out that way um uh, i know by the time this drops um the sh- storm should be um arriving if i'm not mistaken mm. uh, from, so hey you know hopefully uh everybody will be safe so keeping keeping in uh our thoughts and prayers so let's make sure you stay safe out there yeah well said, Kevin. Well said. Uh, Will, you have anything to say? Yeah, you know, we're finally starting to get some more activity between all of us on Twitter. So if you haven't already, you know, follow all of us and, you know, follow the official Four Man Rush account. Mm-hmm. And I'll put everybody's handle up in the description box and interact with us. Talk yeah. ball. Yeah. So started, we started off a little bit slow. We apologize for that when we're starting to get all our social media accounts up but now we're starting to gain some momentum on there so yeah be sure to follow yeah <laughs> it's great stuff it's great stuff from there folks please please get on there at at four man rush it's only only one on there and by guys only one that matters if there is another one so uh, and tim and one more and yeah tim, one more thing uh want to give a shout out to our very own um to Darius mccoy he dropped his first four man rush blog for us yeah. uh he's he's gonna be filling in for um Oh, Norris. So Norris, yeah. yeah, Norris just he just takes some time to get. He got a lot going on. He's preparing for a wedding, mm. preparing for a baby. Mm. Uh, you know, his job has him. You know, working crazy hours during this COVID. So, uh, you know, he'll 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 be he'll be making guest appearances uh, throughout. But right now, uh, Jadaris McCoy, uh, go to the Four Man Rush website, uh, check out his blog. He gave a, a very thorough, very detailed breakdown of of the week. Um, Week one observation. So, mm-hmm. hey, like I said, just uh, that website about to really get crunk. We are we got a lot of content brewing. So yes. make sure you check us out at www.dthe the number four manrush.com. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Way to go, Jadarius. Outstanding, man. And mm-hmm. check out that new video by Timmy Vio in the introductory as well. So, oh yeah, Tim, gotta give you your props. <laughs> As well, you know, we had to redo the website. We had to update the pictures. Right. Had to take down Cam and Luke and replace it with Christian McCaffrey, Brian Burns, and DJ Moore. So Yum make sure y'all check out the revamped Four Man Rush website. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's lit. It's lit. And the the the, the longer we go at this, folks, the better we're going to get, and that means the better the content is going to be for you. So check it out. FourManRush.com. All right, folks, so uh, remember next episode, we're going to break down the defense, and it's going to be fun because we got some talent over there. This probably be, it might be the youngest defense that we ever had on the field as a, as a, as a franchise. Um, so, you know, hold on to your hats. Make sure you check us out for that, okay? All right, so on behalf of the four-man rush, uh, Kevin and Will and myself, Timmy Vio, and everybody else with the four-man rush crew, 
We really appreciate you guys. Please stay safe. This COVID situation is not going anywhere. Look at the University of Alabama. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, just be careful. Take care of yourself, man. Um, and we'll see you around. Uh, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, um, and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, thanks as always. All right, folks. We'll see you on the other side. And as always, keep pounding. Yeah, that's a clear. Dig it, baby. That was a good, good job, good job. Yeah. Like that, man. Is it, I'm, to the point. I'm starting to get excited now, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting to get a little excited now. Yeah, man. I'm relaxed going into this year. I mean, I don't have no expectations like I did last year. Right. See how these young guys play. Everybody has to prove themselves. Yeah, let's see it, man. What you got? What you got? What you got? Yeah, man. I'm just glad we just kind of, you know, we went the route that we went. That we wasn't just, you know, putting out fluff content just to have something to say. You know, we we waited until actual football came back, and you know, we just we back in the flow like we normally are. Yeah, man. And you know, we ain't gonna just put stuff out there just to say. Y'all know who we are. Y'all know how we do it. So yeah, yeah we, we gotta stick to our format, not everybody else's. Exactly. I dig it. I dig it, baby. Yeah, that's just the thing, you see. I'm just taking time to really let it breathe. So baby, just chill. Yeah. She love it, we out in public, and we can chill with my partners, and we can go back to my crib and just chill out the covers. And do we call me and you love us? The Foreman Rush is brought to you by the love and respect of and for the Carolina Panthers and Carolina Panther fans everywhere. Keep pounding. The Four Men Rush is a non-affiliate of the Carolina Panther organization. All thoughts, assessments, and content of this podcast is directly related to the Four Men Rush exclusively. Thank you.